Oh, Jane. What time is it, Jane? It's 12.30, sir. Oh, oh no. That means he'll be here in... 30 minutes? That's five minutes less than last time. That's five minutes less than last time I asked you. But what if the flight's delayed? Oh, goodness gracious, Jane. Please, don't even put that thought into existence. Sorry, sir. He simply must be here. On schedule, that is. Goodness gracious, I can't wait another second to find out what kind of phone that is. I'm sure he'll be here, sir. Th but there's no harm in having a to wait a little longer. What if the bone is even a fossil at all? What if it's, what if it's left over from that fish fry from two years ago? What do we do then? Now, sir, that bone looks much too big to... Well, we'll be a laughingstock in the entire north, nay, the world. I'll have to go into hiding. I'll have to change my name. No, sir. Sir, this is the 17th time you thought you'd have to change your name. And when have you actually had to change it? Never. Exactly! Everything will be fine. Dr. Humorous will be here on time, and the bone will be a great start to our museum collection. Yeah, you're right. Thank you, Jane. I need to that. See, what time is it now? 12.32. Oh, that's two minutes less than the last time. Oh, oh, I'm so excited. Uh, I, um, <clears throat> um, sir? Yes? I think he might be ahead of schedule. What makes you say that? Because there's a dog outside. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh, he's here! He's here! Oh, oh, and 28 minutes early, no less. Oh goodness gracious! How do I look? Does my hair look good? Do I look good? I, what, what, what? Who am I kidding? Of course I look good. Elton did this. Elton's phenomenal. You know that. I know that. You but, look great, sir. Everything will be perfectly fine. All right. Well, well thank you, Jane. Uh, all right. Checklist. Tie. Jacket. Check. Check. And fucking check this off. Um. I'm going to go to the library to check to make sure the bone's there, and, uh... Well, actually, he's going to come with me, so that's kind of counterintuitive. But, uh... Oh, goodness gracious, I'm I'm ready to meet the most famous paleontologist and archaeologist in the world. Well, what are you waiting for, Jane? Let him in! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! We're on a schedule! Hurry! Hurry! Yes, hurry! Sir. Go! 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 Hello? Hello? I do say, is, it, is this the man's house? Yes, 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 indeed, it is. Oh, you must be Dr. Bernard B. Humorous. I've heard so much about you. Yes, oh, you really are quite world-renowned. <laughs> yes, yes, and our small town. Hmm. I am indeed. And who might you be? I'm the mayor. Mayor Leonard. Mayor Leonard Lynx. Lynx mayor. Yeah, that's me. Who? Yeah, you know, I'm in charge of the small little fine town of Snowden. Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell. You spoke on the phone. Oh, yes, you're that nervous chap who kept stuttering on about some sort of bone. Speaking of which, where is this bone? I must have a look. Oh, yes, well, um, it's, it's in the library with uh, our local historian, Walter Barrington. That is our fourth stop on the magnificent tour I have planned for you. The fourth stop? Oh, no, 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 no. That will never do. We must go at once and take this to Mr. Barrington, you speak of? Uh, yes, I, I guess of course we can go to the library. Sure, why not? I'm gonna roam the tour and whatnot. Come on, let's go. Hmm. The Paleolithic period. This really is fascinating indeed. Walter, it is I, the mayor, and I have a guest. Well, just one moment, Leonard. I'll, I just have two more sentences. You see, and this is a local library with no other than Walter Barrington. Is that my book on prehistoric life over the ages? It is indeed. You must be Dr. Bernard B. Humorous. I have been reading all of your books, and really, you've done some brilliant work. Thank you, good sir. You must be Mr. Bamington. Oh, please, call me Walter. At least he knew who you were. I had no idea who I was, being mayor of this town. This fine gentleman right here says you have a bone for me. The name's Mayor Leonard, by the way. Right. I do indeed. It's right this way. If you give me a moment, I'll bring it right back to you. Oh, don't trouble yourself, friend. I'll just come with you. Well, right this way, then. Well, hold on, hold on. Before you get going, I must be going. Lots of important mayor business and whatnot, and, well, please just let me know what you find out. What, what kind of bone this is. Dr. Um, Humorous, is it? Yeah, yeah, see, it's not funny anymore, is it? And Walter, you have a good day. I'll just, uh, just let myself out. Insecure little fellow, isn't he? No, that's not it. No, oh, that's not it either. No, oh, <laughs> here we are. Okay, so from the knowledge I've gathered in your book, it appears to be some sort of leg bone. 
It does. Good work, Walter. It's not often I meet another intellectual. Well, thank you, Doctor. Please, call me Bernard. Okay, of course, Benny. That's too far. Apologies. So, uh, Bernard, which sort of creature do you think it could be? That's a good question. To determine what kind of creature it could come from, we first had to figure out what kind of period it comes from. But there's so many in the prehistory era. How could we determine what kind of bone this is and where it fits? For the untrained eye, it might be difficult. But you see, with my keen eye, I can determine this. It's quite simple, my friend. You see, this right here is the Triassic period, the first set of three periods. It started when all the continents started to drift across, uh, well, together in the world. You see, they were all very close together. And though there were very few differences between the species at the time, they all mingled around each other. And the world was very hot and dry, making a very prime space for reptilian inhabitants to live and thrive. Toward the end of the period, Massive volcanoes started to shake and cut in earthquakes, causing the dinosaur continent just to fully collapse in on itself. They started to drift away from each other. Ah, fun times. These were fun times. But how does this help us define what the bone comes from? Well, you see, the Triassic period was the very first of the dinosaur uh, period. And so from this point, things had to change. Now that we wrapped up the Triassic period, we move on to the... Jurassic period. Ah, yes, the Jurassic period. During this period, a lot of rainfall increased, and this caused a lot of vegetation to grow and split the, the continents into, well, several continents and into this mess right here. But it, it's okay. You see, it had a wider variety of dinosaur species to surface at this point. Dinosaurs got much bigger. Ah, da, 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 da. And there tended to be a lot of seropods, which planned well, they, they planned on eating plants. See, these dinosaurs, in fact, by the end of this period, had gigantic plant-eating seropod herds that could, could ruin an entire environment, matter of fact. So you think that this bone might be from a herd of seropods? No, of course not. That's preposterous. But you just said it was big. Indeed, I did say it was big. But not big enough to be any sort of bone from a seropod. No, 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 no. On to the next one the Cretaceous period. You see, the continents that drifted apart, drifted apart even further. Further, can you believe it? Further, I know, I know. At this point, dinosaur species started to diversify into even more and larger predators of all sorts of things, such as seropods. You know, and seropods started to become more common around this period, other than, more than other species. You see, other species did begin to emerge, and this was the beginning of the mammals, and introduced the spark at the beginning of the end of the dinosaur era. True story. Well, it's all truly fascinating, but how does this help us define where the bone is from? Well, you see, I mean, well, that's just the thing. I've never seen anything like this before, from dinosaurs to mammals, to even birds. I've never come across a bone like this before. And I imagine it must have come from a decent-sized land-based dinosaur, like a Triceratops. Ooh, or, or potentially. I don't know. I've never seen anything like it before, truth be told. What if it's a mammoth? Excuse me. You know, a mammoth. That fluffy big elephant thing that lives in the north. Who this child is this? Bernard, this is my nephew Isaac. Isaac, this is Dr. Bernard. He's a very smart man who came to identify the bone you found. Well, Isaac... The thought that this could be a mammoth bone is preposterous. This bone is much too old and its size is just not right. No, hold on. I, I think we could hear him out. Isaac, what do you think on this? Well, I'm glad you asked. As a scientist, you see... No, I'm kidding. I'm just being your train. Well, you said it yourselves. It resembles more like a bone. It's much too big to belong to any other creature who lives here nowadays. But it's about the size of an elephant bone. And looks very similar to one. But elephants never lived up north. And they're distant relatives, though. The mammoth did live here. No, not to mention Lucy and I found a tusk today in the backyard, so, uh, so there's that. Tusk, you say? No, that's absurd. Wait, let me, let me look at this thing. Well, look at that. The idea that this is a mammoth is... The kid's right. We have a mammoth skeleton. How could I let this happen? Excuse me. I've been outsmarted.
by a mere child, Walter. A mere child. Why? To have been proven wrong. I have to retire. There's nothing else I can do. Bernard, this is ridiculous. We need your help to uh, excavate more of this mammoth before the museum. No, no, I'll never work again. I, Dr. Bernard, be humorous. We'll never work again. I'm, I'm supposed to know everything about paleontology and archaeology. If a mere child can outsmart me, then I'm not worthy of the title, Arnold. Uh, Walter, Arnold, whatever your name is. I'm sorry. I'm still learning names here. Come on, Bernard. You can't let this ruin your career. There's always things we don't know, but to be told you're wrong by a small penguin in a fireman's hat, that's, that's just ridiculous. Well, we, we all are taught things from children sometimes. No, I'm sorry, Walter. Your town is on its own. Dr. Humorous was retiring for good. What if I were to prove to you that you were not the only expert in your field to be taught by something, by a mere child? Then will you try to excavate? I suppose it, it wouldn't hurt the try. But where are you going to find these people that have been taught by a mere child? <laughs> Follow me. Hank, do you have a second? Brother! I'm sorry I don't have any new experiments for you to try, but Aaron and I are working on a new secret sauce for salmon patties. But I'm sure if you come back by tomorrow, I'm sure you'll love them. Why? That's actually perfectly fine. But I, I didn't come for the food. I came for the company. Oh, well, you came at the perfect time. There just happens to be a lull in the afternoon rush. And who might this be? Oh, yes, yes, this is Dr. Bernard B. Humorous. He's a renowned archaeologist and paleontologist. That was until I was outsmarted, that is. Well, you see, Bernard, this is my brother Hank. He is the best chef here in Snowden, and he has gone around the world studying the art of cooking. And he is incredibly high regard in this field. And guess who he has working for him? Isaac's brother. Working for are being shown up are two different things. Indeed they are. But in Hank's time, working with Aaron, I am sure he has been taught a number of things. Go on, tell him, Hank. Yes, in fact, the day I hired Aaron, he taught me a lesson. I tried to run this whole diner by myself, with every person in town ordering food, and I made a complete fool of myself. And it wasn't until Aaron stepped in to help that I realized it's okay to ask for help sometimes. Learning a little moral lesson is a little different than being shut up in your entire field that you've spent years studying in. Oh, that's true. But not this time. The Aaron has taught me things. In fact, some of our best recipes in the menu were thought up by Aaron. I worked for months trying to perfect our shrimp gumbo soup. Aaron walked in like it was nothing, threw some spices in, voila, perfect soup. That must have been a shameful experience. Not at all. I was very proud of my little apprentice. See, people learn things all the time from kids, much younger than them, but less experience. One time, for instance, it, it doesn't change anything. It just means I have someone to would share my sorrows with when I retire. Well, you have to do more than that when I'm done with you. Pardon? This way, Bernard. You and I are going to pay a visit to the town's detective. Daniel Finnegan, it's me, Walter. Hmm. Oh yeah, Walter. I'm sorry I haven't found any more bones for you. Although the ice school children did mention a tusk being found in the yard. No worries, Dad. I didn't come for an update, just a friendly chat. Allow me to introduce you to my friend, Dr. Bernard B. Humorous. He is a world-renowned paleontologist and archaeologist, and he has come to look at the bone we found. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir, Dr. Humorous. You know, they call me Fossil Finnegan around here. No one calls you that. Good day, Mr. Finnegan. I'm, I'm afraid I can't help with anything further with this fossil excavation. I'm retiring. Retiring? But you just got here. You see, Bernard believes that it is unprofessional to learn something from a less experienced, younger individual in your field, and therefore wants to retire. I was shown up by an, an intellect, by a mere child. It was truly the most embarrassing moment of my career. What child could show up a renowned scholar? Isaac. Ah, uh, the icicle children. I've had a run in with two of them. You have? The year was 2023. I was working my toughest case yet. Well, to date. Finding a rampant thief in our neighborhood when a young penguin in a pink bow approached me on the street. Sure I'd done the work. Simply told me where and the when and who. Close to case of minutes that I've been working on days to solve. 
I'm sure that was the only time. The month was November. I have been having a slow couple weeks and received a call from a little penguin reporting the missing person. Within a few minutes of my hunt, an expert, she had already determined where they were and no longer needed my services. They outsmarted twice. The date was last week. I have been searching for the for at least a week to find a simple clue. A single one, even. <sighs> they could find me to a fossil to create a museum for the town. Only to have this little penguin and a polar bear walk into my office with a giant bone and no explanation. Can you believe that? No explanation whatsoever. That I scored you and found the bone? Indeed. They did now? Do you believe that it is completely normal to learn things from those younger than you? All I believe is that the people in this town have either incredibly intelligent children or are not very bright themselves. Well, that's not really nice to say. I'm sorry, Walter, but I simply cannot help you with the excavation. My credibility has been questioned. I must retire. Bernard, wait. I have one more story for you. Take one last look at the bone before I quit for good. I'm sure you don't want to retire, do you? What choice do I have? My pride's been destroyed. Forget your pride! It does us all good to have our pride dashed every now and then. But, but how can I face the scientific community again, knowing that I have no more intelligence than a mere eight-year-old child? You have plenty of intelligence. Sometimes the smarter we are, the harder it is to see the obvious answers. Younger, less experienced people can go point things out that we struggle to see day in and day out. Your friends' stories, it, they certainly helped me to feel like I was in good company, but... Unless someone as similar intellect as me can tell me, without a shadow of a doubt, that they learned something from a child, the only answer for, it, for me is to retire. Well, dear friend, you're in luck. As it turns out, Aaron, Lucy, and Isaac are my niece and nephews. And I've learned something from them almost every day. You do? Indeed. Aaron is a brilliant hockey player and what I would consider a master chef. I'm learning new moves and new recipes from him all the time. And then there's Isaac. The boy <laughs> loves magic and is incredibly well-spoken and literate for his age. He has certainly taught me so much about Shakespeare and quite a few magic tricks. Finally, there's Lucy. That little girl is the most creative thing on this planet. She can paint anyone in circles and is always coming up with new stories and ideas. Why, just the other day she taught me how to draw a castle and any of my writing that I do ever is inspired by her plot lines. And you're not ashamed to be being best by any of them. Quite the contrary. I'm proud to know them and excited to see them when, you know, they go into the future. The children of today are our leaders of tomorrow, and I would quite cons be concerned if they weren't as brilliant or bright as they are now. I suppose there's nothing wrong with a little education now and then? Not at all. Now, Bernard, are you up for at least one excavation day before you retire? Well, indeed. 